everyone, and welcome to another episode of Annual Pass. This is the podcast where we talk everything about theme parks, shows, rides, attractions, snacks, foods, anything having to do with theme parks or inter- theme park entertainment. We'll talk about here on Annual Pass. I am your host, Jack Patillo, and of course, I'm joined, as always, by my beautiful, talented, and lovely co-host, Jeff Ramsey. Hi, Jeffrey. Hello. Jack Hyder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, as you can see, we, we are, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, youtube.com slash annual pass. Thank you very much for that. Check that out. We're doing a lot more stuff over on our YouTube channel, including more kind of short form stuff you'll be seeing very soon. Uh, but yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're not together today. We're still on like, you know, holiday stuff. So we're, we're recording from home, but hey, you know, we're, we're being extra, s- we're being extra safe. This is the, t- we're recording this. I love to date these things. So people know this was recorded <laughs> on Wednesday, December 29th. This will be the last annual pass recorded in the year 2021, although it won't air till 2022. Uh, but we are being extra, extra, extra safe because of, uh, I don't know, this Omicron thing people keep talking Om- about. Omicron, Omnicron, Om- Omnitron. Anyway, it's uh, it's good to be here. Thank you very much. You're going to it's, you know, we're in our home office. So my cat Cooper has just joined me. He says hello. Uh, hi, everybody. Hope you're having yourself a good time. Hope you had. Well, I mean, it's it's the end of January at this point now. So like, I'm, it's weird because we're recording so close to like the holidays and whatnot. But this isn't coming out for a while. So I apologize if we get some weird holiday stuff mixed in with everything. Uh we uh, last week, Jeff, was the Kevin Perger interview, uh, our, the gentleman from Defunct Land. Hopefully mm-hmm. uh, people enjoyed that episode. I love those interview episodes. They're a lot of fun. Hey, sir. I, I love them, too. Hey, real fast. Uh, I'm going to totally interrupt you and destroy your train of thought. Go uh, for you it. said your cat, your cat is in there with you. Yes. Yes. Cooper's here. You, he do, you have, do you have do you have a phone? Can you take a can you take a picture of Cooper? Sure. Or do you just want to see him? I might be able to, sh- to share him with you. No, no. Take a take a photo if, okay, if, you, want, if you can. Because Cooper. I can't turn my camera around, Cooper, smile. but Henry Henry is in here with me, and he's being super cute, so I took a photo, and then if ah. you take a photo, then we can have the photos edited in to show how cute our animals were while oh, we nice. were filming. Okay, I'm going to post this in our in our Slack channel then, so yeah. we, so so that way we don't forget about it, and that way Ben, our producer, is going to be like, what the heck? Why are there animal photos in the, uh, in the Slack channel? I don't get it. That makes no sense. I took a, I've never seen this before. I took a photo of uh, Henry with my new iPhone. And uh, after the after I took the photo, my phone turned off. <laughs> you were t- you were too cute for my phone, Henry. <laughs> All right. Just, I'm sorry. You're talking about an awesome interview we did with Kevin. Uh, yeah. From yeah. Defunct so, Land. yeah. Kevin Perger from Defunct Land. It was a lot of fun. Um, I actually had a chance to meet him. So I met I met him out in California. We went out there for uh, for Christmas holiday with my family. And, uh, and, and he was there and like, uh, like we, we hung out for a little bit. He was, uh, he was just you know, like very kind to join us at Epcot and, uh, wait outside the Ratatouille ride. And then he had to bolt cause he had a flight to catch the next day, but it was still pretty cool to meet him. And hopefully you guys dug that episode. Hopefully you guys like the interview episodes. Those, those to me are the most fun because you get to learn cool stuff about, you know, different people's takes on stuff. And, and hopefully we can do a lot more of that. And if you are someone who's worked in the theme park industry, we'd love to talk to you. If it's feel free to email us annual pass at roosterteeth.com uh follow us on social media as well annual underscore pass on twitter and instagram and uh yeah that'd be great and youtube.com slash annual pass and buy a shirt i would also like to echo that i hope people like the interviews because uh i know that interviews just just based on previous podcast work we've done over the last 1000 years we've worked together Mm -hmm. uh interviews tend to be uh polarizing uh, to audiences uh, from time to time, yeah. but uh, because it you know it can it messes with the di- people get used to a dynamic of a podcast. But I I would hope that people understand that I, I think interviews are a big part of annual pass and will continue to be. I think that they in a lot of ways they're the meat of what we do, which is getting yeah. to the bottom of what makes these theme parks as wonderful and as magical as I am learning <laughs> as their proxy. Th- you know through these conversations. Oh, man. Well, hopefully next year, Joe, or hopefully this year, I guess, technically, you and I can go yeah. to a whole lot more theme parks and uh, and actually experience stuff together, which I'm excited because uh, going to theme parks with you has been a lot of fun. We've done it twice now, and um, I've had a blast doing it. And so I'm, I'm excited to hopefully do more of that this year as uh, as the year progresses. And so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> should, now, should now that I was, I was just thinking, now that we've been to two theme parks, our theme parks together twice... I've been to theme parks with you more than anybody else in my life. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. That was easy. Yeah, it didn't take long. 
Nice, nice. Well, there we go. We'll, we'll make it happen. We'll go to some Six Flags. We'll go to Disney. We still haven't gone to Disney together. We got to do that. We got to go to Sea World and all of the things we can do. It's going to be a, Knott's it's be Berry a good year. Farm and d- 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 Cedar Point, uh, man. Cedar Point, Faulty Towers and uh, <laughs> Cedar Cedar Plank and all these other places we're supposed to Faulty go. Faulty Towers. We're going to that that classic PBS show. Yeah. Guess, was that on BBC or was this PBS? I don't know. Well, anyway, it, it was. I mean, it was a BBS. It was a <laughs> it was a BBC show that was. Then simulcast, uh, or then was picked up by PBS in America. There were only like later. twelve episodes of that show too, and I kind of like remember Doctor my Who. dad watching it like nonstop. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, so speaking of uh, things that you and I have done together, uh, attractions and and shows and places where you and I have gone together, Jeff. Today we are talking about a ride that you have been on. I'm very okay. excited for this. We we don't. There's not oh. many of those. So it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> can, can I tell you, a, I'm, I'm just going to keep, my goal today is just to distract you. I'm sorry. Nice. I don't know why. That's but okay. I keep remembering just smashing his stuff. face against my microphone. So this is good times. Ah, that's adorable. Uh, I was informed by my girlfriend. You, you and I were talking about the Incredicoaster recently, and I yeah. was talking about it seemed cool, but I didn't remember it. Uh, according to my girlfriend, that was the very first ride I went on when we went to Disney. <laughs> How did you forget the very, that? It's a big roller coaster. Very first ride we went on. I have no idea, but I did not remember it. Wow, that's that's actually impressive. It's she said I liked it. It's the it's the only <laughs> it's the only giant roller coaster in all of Disneyland. I mean, yeah. like Matterhorn, but I mean, it's it's like it's the. I big remember one. the Matterhorn. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, according to Emily, I I quite enjoyed it. So okay, well that's kudo, good. Kudos advice. to Incredicoaster. All right. Well, we got to go back and write it together and uh, and have a nom nom cookie. So uh, uh, no, but Jeff. So we've been to Universal Studios and Universal Studios or Universal Islands of Adventure in Orlando, Florida. So today yes. we are talking about an attraction at Universal Studios. We are talking about Shrek 4D. Oh, I went on that one. You did go on that one, and you remember to get your 3D goggles too on that one. <laughs> <laughs> not like not like the Jimmy Fallon ride. We'll, we'll get to that one in the future. So I don't think Shrek, I missed anything by not having those goggles in the Jimmy that's Fallon That's true. Uh, the Shrek 4D uh, attraction actually just closed in Orlando. It closed on January 10th of this year. As a matter of fact, uh, the plan is, uh, we, it hasn't happened yet, but the plan is I'm going to be there on the last day of the attraction being open. So uh, Katie and I are going out to Orlando for the, the Disney Marathon. And that's on the 9th. And so January 10th, the next day, I'm going to be uh, recovering from my marathon and going on the, the Shrek 40 attraction one last time. So, uh, but I figured we should talk about it. It's, it's been, it's been gone from Orlando for just over a week now. Uh, still exists in the world though. It still, it still is out there. And um, yeah. So did, did you enjoy this one, Jeff? Did you enjoy this attraction when we were there? Uh, yeah. Hold on a second. I'm, I'm trying to remember. Uh, we went, so we went in, there was a, uh... There was like a, a fun holding area, right? Mm-hmm. This is the, this the torture chamber. The torture chamber. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good one. It was a good one. It was like a little story and stuff. Shrek was yeah. in it. Uh, Lady <laughs> Shrek was in it. Fiona, Lord yes. uh, F- F- Farquaad, is that his name? Was he in it? That's his name, yes. Yeah. Oh, and there were, was there ghosts? There was a ghost. Lord, Far- Lord Farquaad is a ghost in this Is attraction. a ghost, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, yeah. Clearly, I remember. I remember it well. <laughs> so from uh, Universal Orlando's website, action, that's ogre the top. Uh, Lord, <laughs> Lord Farquaad has returned in ghostly form and kidnapped Princess Fiona. Shrek and Donkey are hot on his tail. You're along for the ride, watching it unfold. And with your ogre vision glasses and a few special effects, you'll see, feel and hear what's happening, pulling you into the story like never before. So, uh, yeah, so this is the uh, this this takes place right after the end of the first Shrek movie. Jeff, you're I know you're a big Shrek movie fan, right? Have we talked about that in the past, right? <laughs> I don't know. Have we? I, I, I don't think I've ever seen a Shrek movie. Wow. That's why Maybe we that, talked about it on the day in the line. Yeah, I don't know that. I, I don't know. I just don't know that ever came up. They're not bad movies. You should actually go watch them. They're they're pretty entertaining. Yeah, um, I didn't. I, I I didn't assume that they were bad. I just haven't seen one. Why? Why do you assume they were bad? That's so so rude of you. <laughs> uh, so the movie Shrek the movie opened on April twenty second two thousand one. Uh, apparently, DreamWorks Animation was having a rough go at it at the time. So they had released Road to El Dorado, didn't make a lot of money, um, mm. and they were kind of like on the ropes of kind of like, all right, this is sort of our last shot. And then Shrek exploded and just became super popular. 
made hundreds of millions of dollars, actually won the Oscar for Best Animated Film that year as well. So uh, Shrek obviously put DreamWorks Animation back on the map. Now you've got your, uh, I want to say, is Ice Age DreamWorks Animation? I believe it is, right? Or is that Fox? It is Fox. or it isn't. Anyway, uh, but, you know, you know, the Kung Fu Panda, that's one. You know, the Secret Life of Pets, oh. that's one. Um, those are all DreamWorks animation. Obviously, it's gone on uh, to be quite successful. Is uh, How to Train Your Dragon DreamWorks? That is. That's DreamWorks animation, that's, isn't it? See, that's the franchise right there. There's a lot of legs in that one. Very popular. Well, you, know, you, know about, uh, you know about the uh, How to Train Your Dragon land. Do you know about that, Jeff? Yeah, I think you told me that. Uh, it's going to be an ep epic universe. Yes, look at you. Look at Did you I get that right? Knowledge. You got it right, Jeff. Proud of myself. You should be. You should be. Yeah, so. I've seen I've seen uh, the first two of those movies, and the second one uh, was even better than the first. That's true. The third one's pretty good too. Insane. I don't know if I've seen it. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> a there's a, a white night nightshade. Is that what they're called? The uh, the toothless whatever his toothless is. It's called a dragon, Jack. He's a dragon. <laughs> Uh, so let's get back to it. Uh, obviously, Shrek had blown up and was very successful. And uh, at the time, Orlando or Universal was like, hey, we should do something with this property that's incredibly popular. So let's make an attraction out of it. And it was quickly it was quickly determined that, hey, let's do a, a Shrek 4D attraction that we can throw in the parks. Um, and it opened in Hollywood on May 23rd, 2003, Orlando, June 12th, 2003, and Japan, June 20th, 2003. So um, within, you know, just a, just, just a month, it opened in three different parks all over the planet, which is pretty impressive. Um, I have a question for you. Go ahead. Do you think there's any person uh, alive or now deceased on this earth that attended the uh, opening day of all three? Um, maybe there may have been someone who worked on the attraction, like mm -hmm. someone like, like an engineer or one like of their, I forget, I forget what the, the Imagineers, or... yeah, I forget what the Imagineers for, uh, Universal are called, uh, the, the team members there, but yeah, I'm willing to, bet maybe someone who worked as that, like someone who was actually, you know, behind the scenes working on something like that, maybe would have been to all of them. If they don't have a name, can I recommend they should, can, they should, they should call themselves members of the Imagination. <laughs> Like I'm a everything, citizen of the imagination. Everything changed when the imagination attacks. <laughs> uh, oh, so it then opened. So years later, obviously, uh, the the Shrek the Shrek 40 attraction was wildly successful. Cooper, come on, man, he just he just keeps walking back and forth in front of the camera. Uh, the 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 attraction was incredibly successful. Just it, super, super long lines for years and years and years. And uh, and then in, in March 18th of 2010, it opened at Universal Studios Singapore. So uh, so all four of the uh, at that time, the Universal Parks had Shrek 4D open. And here's something interesting, Jeff. Shrek 4D didn't only open at Universal Parks. They opened it at other parks as well, including the Warner Brothers Movie World, September 17th, 2005 and Movie Park Germany. May 27th, 2008. So those were not owned by Universal, but they licensed out the property to be actually to be shown in those uh, those places as well, which is interesting. I've never heard of that before. Is it still there in those locations? They, those are all shut down. So it's only open right now. As of today, it's only open in Universal Japan and Universal Singapore. Um, not only that, I want to say the uh, in, in Singapore, uh, Shrek, actually, there's a whole far, far away land where there's a bunch of different Shrek stuff. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So they actually mm. like they had a whole land themed around. it started kind of with the anchor of the Shrek 40 attraction, but other stuff as well. Um, but yeah, so it uh, it shut down in Hollywood, August 13th, 2017 in Orlando, January 10th, 2021, just a week and a half ago, uh, 2022. shut down 2022, sorry, oh, 2022, 2022. excuse me, uh, and Warner Brothers Movie World, it shut down August 29th, 2010, so it was only there for about five years, and Movie Park Germany, it was shut down July 4th, 2011, a very patriotic thing to do, it was only there for about three years in, in Movie Park Germany, so I wonder... Uh, I yeah. wonder why they had such short-lived tenures there. Like, if it was a, the end of a licensing agreement, or if it just, you know, it had run the natural course of 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 its uh, life cycle in those markets, yeah. or what? I don't know. And it went. And they were actually done in like they re-recorded it in German. So it's like it was all, you know, they they actually had like a proper screening of it. It wasn't just like some weird kind of one-off thing. So. I don't know. I, I don't know the full story. We'll have to do a whole episode on Movie Park Germany. I wonder if that's even there anymore. 
Um, well, so if it is, we should go. <laughs> so I'm going to focus mainly on the the U.S. versions of the attraction, just because that's I've I've seen those uh, in uh, in Hollywood. The uh, the Shrek 40 attraction replaced Rugrats Magic Adventure 3D, which I didn't know was a thing. So I guess there was a Rugrats 3D show. I don't know if it was if it was a movie or live action or what, but hey, that's kind of cool. In uh, in Universal Orlando, it replaced the Alfred Hitchcock The Art of Making Movies, which was an mm. awesome awesome attraction. Uh, it was like a three stage thing you would go through, and uh, I, I'm a little disappointed that I mean, I it's it's one of those things that I was super into uh, when it was there because the the sort of Universal Studios Orlando and you know Hollywood or Disney MGM Studios and in uh, Disney World were very much focused on kind of behind the scenes of making movies and like how stuff got made and like sets and props and, you know, special effects. And uh, the art of making movies, the Alfred Hitchcock, the art of making movies was a really, really cool way. They showed off like how Hitchcock did certain things like, um, you know, like they, they showed how they created the uh, the shower scene in Psycho and how they used chocolate syrup instead of any sort of like dye because it was mm -hmm. filmed in black and white and chocolate syrup had a better consistency for blood. And it's some really neat stuff, including like a, a 3D screen where it was like birds in 3D that like tore through the screen. It was really, really neat. And then a whole like exhibit area at the very back of it where they showed off some special effects, like how they do like the vertigo, um, you know, when he looks down and like the vertigo thing where the uh, like the stairs sort of like get further away from him. And it, it, it's some really, really cool stuff. And um, anyway, Shrek replaced that really cool thing. I mean, I'll, I'll be it. At least Shrek was a decent attraction. It wasn't like a, a supercharge or anything. So um, still, it's, it's kind of sad that we don't really have that kind of stuff anymore. Like uh, there is no more like Foley effects type shows that you saw in all the parks. There's there's no more kind of pull the curtain back. The only sort of thing like that is the the horror makeup show, which I still to this day love more than any other show on any park. I love that show. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but and so that's it replaced those things. Uh, this also around the time at Universal Orlando, they also replaced the uh the the world of uh, the Hanna Barbera 3D show so i think they took them both down relatively the same time keep in mind this is also a few years after island of adventure had opened um so they were trying to sort of re you know re re pump up universal studios orlando um at the time like men in black had just opened a few years prior so they were they were trying to like you know like sort of like renovates universal studios to try to make it a little bit more exciting as a as a park on its own as opposed to being like oh we will go there after we're done with islands of adventure so right. oh man so shrek 40 as well it's one of those things where you think like oh it's just a you know it's a 3d show let's just kind of like run our our like sort of scrubs at the animation studio like you just you guys knock it out whatever they didn't do that for this. For this, they actually had like the elite team who worked on Shrek, the movie, to come in and actually make the animated short. So it's a 12 minute oh. short and they used the actual like full blown animation team for it. It wasn't just like some guys or it wasn't like a side project. This was a full blown production. And not only that, all of the main actors from the first movie are back, including John Lithgow, who plays Lord Farquaad. Uh, he's in ghost form, obviously, for this movie, but he wasn't going to he wasn't even going to be in the second movie. Like he, they, they convinced him to come back for a 3D film. So that's pretty significant. It's not like something they just kind of like, you know, we're like, oh, hey, you know, would you like to be in this? And he's like, eh, I don't think so. Like they actually got him to come back and reprise his role, which is pretty cool. And so he got to he got to play that character for just a little bit more time for an additional 12 minutes or so. But, um, he's a big get because you know he's just sitting at home counting that Harry and the Hendersons money. <laughs> Hard to that, get him to show up. That Dexter season <laughs> four money. Third that rock, third from, the rock from the sun. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's a pretty cool attraction. And Jeff, I mean, like before we get into the the ride through, Jeff, did you enjoy going the attraction when we were there? Yeah, I, I think I really enjoyed it. Uh, you probably remember better than I do, since you seem to remember everything better than I do. Uh, how did I enjoy it? <laughs> Uh, you seem to have fun. Yeah. I think you were like, oh, th that's Shrek. And I was like, oh, yeah, you haven't seen these movies, have you? Um, I mean, I have a familiarity with it. I understand there's like uh, you know, the, the, main, the main players in the story. <laughs> so, yeah, well, we'll you know, you know, it's kind of cool, too. The queue outside, obviously, uh, it's kind of a, your basic sort of snaking queue. Uh, there are monitors that show off some clips from the Shrek movies. And, you know, I think they do some trivia and stuff. But the the pre-show area is actually really, really neat. And do you remember that that pre-show area where we're like in the torture chamber? Mm hmm. Yeah. And they have, the, yeah, they have was... the three little pigs and Pinocchio's in there and the magic mirror. They do a really good job of sort of setting up the plot of what's about to happen when you go into the attraction. And right. um, 
Yeah, I remember uh, when we wrote it. Was it was it around the time that uh, Venom Two came out, or was it, or was that was was that Katie and I? Because they they have a uh, like like it's it's Shrek, so they can kind of have fun with it, you know. And so the team member there, I remember. As we were going into the theater, the team members like, OK, everyone move inside. If, if you don't move inside quick, I'm going to tell you about Venom 2. <laughs> and then it's like, and then it was like, he's like, you're taking too long. He's like Venom 2. It was horrible. I hated it. They ruined Carnage. I loved Carnage. They ruined Carnage. <laughs> it's like, that must have been you and Katie. I think I remember okay. that. <laughs> it was just so, it was like this guy. It reminded me of our Armando, our friend over at Funhouse. Uh, just very, very, very funny guy. But anyway. Yeah, he is. Um, the, the, the sort of, the pre-show area is really neat because it's made to look like Lord Farquaad's torture chamber where he's trying to get information about Shrek and Fiona and, um, and you know, Gingy's there on the, the table being, you know, plucked around with and the magic mirror kind of explains the plot of the first movie. You haven't seen it. It's really neat. It's it's really nicely dressed and themed. And then when you go inside to the theater, the theater is kind of just plain. So it's like, oh, OK, that's sort of a sort of a letdown, but that's OK. And also the the whole pre-show is like they send you into the larger torture chamber and it's just a movie theater. Like the, and also the movie starts and it has nothing to do with that. Um, but whatever. They, they tried. They did something kind of cool. So, um, Jeff, are you ready to go once again and ride slash watch Shrek 4D. I would love for you to refresh my memory. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, I'm, I've got a I've got a video up here that it's it's someone just filmed the screen, but it's in 3D. So everything's like doubled. So we'll see how this goes. But here we go. Jeff. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Jeff. Yeah. Jeff, we're at, we're at Universal Studios. We're going to go ride Shrek 4D. I again. can't wait. We, we've I, done I it before, but we're, we're going to do it again, Jeff. It's, yeah, my memory's like Swiss cheese, Jack. I'm basically a goldfish swimming in this. Uh... <laughs> no, that's that's Finding Nemo. That's that's a different. That's a different park. That's universe. Just keep that's just, just keep shrekking, Jack. Just keep shrekking. Oh, there we go. There, okay, so we've gone through the pre-show, Jeff. Okay, Jeff, where do you want to sit? We're we're this big theater here. Where do you want to sit? Seventeenth uh, row, seats eight and nine. Perfect. Okay, make sure you're counting and okay, we're good. We okay, we found our seat, Jeff. We're, okay, we're sitting here. Do uh, you have your ogre vision glasses, Jeff? I do 3D. this time. Yeah. Or 4D, I guess. All right, Jeff, here we go. <laughs> We're putting them on. Oh, Jeff, okay, the movie's starting. The movie's starting. Okay. Well, it's Tinkerbell. Or, I, I assume that's Tinkerbell or some sort of fairy is popping out, and she's making like, there's like, oh, and then she got eaten by a, a frog. A frog ate oh, her, no. Jeff. Oh, no. Oh, now the frog spit her out. Now, now he's is it the princess? Because... Is it the frog from the princess and the frog? This is yeah, getting the, insane, Jack. Uh, we're, well, we're, the, the seats are throwing us around, too, Jeff. They're, they're all over the place, and we're following the frog around. Oh, look, oh, okay, he hit a tree, and now, uh, Jeff, it's, look at Shrek and Donkey, and now, wait, oh, Donkey's flying, Jeff. He's a flying donkey. I, I, is that in the movie? Yes, it's like right at the very beginning of the movie, and, and then, so, then Fiona's like, I'm crying, because it, this thing's an onion, and then Donkey like, opens it up and makes it all good for her, good for her, remember uh, that? Yeah, you know? sure. All right, so Shrek, Shrek and Fiona, is there? So going he's a Pegasus? Him. Is Donkey like a Donkey Pegasus? No, he's flying, Jeff. That's the second time he's flying. Because the first movie, you haven't seen the first. Anyway, hey, okay, Shrek's like, hey, let's go down this spooky, creepy way. And Donkey's like, that's a bad idea. And he's like, no, it's going to be faster. And then Shrek's way like, faster. oh, look. And he pulls up a spider, Jeff. You hate spiders. I'm not a fan. <laughs> so, well, oh, Jeff, there's a whole Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Oh, you ah, can feel it. spiders back there everywhere. I can feel them. You can feel him on your feet. Oh, that's creepy. All right. Oh, no. Hey, Jeff, it's it's the bad guy. It's it's What's his name? It's not Hercules. I forget his name. But he's going after Fiona. He, he tied up Fiona, Jeff. He's, he's going away with her. L oh, no. Stop <laughs> All right, him. Jeff. All right, quick. Now we've got to chase after him. So we're, now we're, we're chasing after him. We're, we're in our cart, and we're going down the... We're, we're following him. We're following the, the Thercules. What was his name? I completely forget. Anyway. Thercules. Thercules. Yeah, Thercules. Okay, so here we go. We're trying to follow after him, and it's really spooky. We're going through the spooky area. Oh, look. It's, it's Gingy's house, Jeff. Oh, we're going to go right oh. through it. We're going to smash his house. Why was, Ging oh. why was Gingerbread Man living in the spooky forest? That makes no sense at all. That, 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 this is a plot hole, Jack. <laughs> oh, Jeff. Okay. Oh, my gosh, Jeff. We're, Don't we're step in it. We're in a spooky graveyard, Jeff. It's a spooky Ooh. graveyard now. It's so spooky. And there's a oh, there's a ghost hand floating around. Grab, grab Donkey's tail, Jeff. The spooky ghost <laughs> hand grab Donkey's tail. And he's like, oh, I'm spared. And then then Shrek's all does it give you the heebie jeebies. And it's like, oh, it's it's spooky and scary. And look at that. It's a it's the it's the tomb of, of Lord Farquaad. He's fighting a dragon. And he and Shrek's oh, like yeah. 
And he's like, hey, do you think he's trying to make up for anything? Uh-huh. And, oh, he, he, pos- he possessed the, the statue, and he's got a big pointy thing pointing at us, Jeff. It's spooky. Jeff, the dragon's coming alive. The dragon's oh my God. alive, Jeff. Ah! All right, Jeff, we got to get out of here. Oh, look. Oh, the, uh, the, the other dragon showed up. The, the non-concrete dragon. It's, it's Donkey's girlfriend dragon. It's what? I mean, what? <laughs> Donkey's <laughs> dating a dragon? Yeah, well, they they have kids together too. It's 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 a whole thing. Okay, I now we're flying. Movie. Jeff, now we're we're doing like a trench run from Star Wars now. Like we're flying around, and it's like dra- okay. red dragon going in. Woo! And then oh, there's a big hole, and then but the our dragon was able to like retract her wings, but the the stone dragon couldn't. No, oh, the stone dragon fell down. Ah, poor stone dragon. Okay, oh, no. so. All right, so Lord Farquaad's telling telling Fiona what's going on. He's gonna he's gonna kill her and then make him his ghost bride. Ooh, spooky! Mm. And he's gonna throw her over a uh, over a waterfall, Jeff. A, a spooky Ugh. waterfall. And then and Thermonucleus is like, okay, no, oh, sorry. Now he's with her for some reason. Uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> and now, okay, so we've we, okay, we made it. Shrek, Shrek and Donkey have made it there. They're all with they're with Fiona. And now, oh, they're oh what oh, Jeff? They're, they're gonna fall over the edge. Oh no! Don't fall. They're, they fell! Oh, but no, the guy saved the the, the dude saved them. Therm- thermonuclear. Yeah, he grabbed them and then but now they're falling and oh Jeff! Oh the dragon! Oh, the dragon saved them as they were falling over the side, and now oh the ghost Farquad is like, oh my sweet, and then oh she floats up and then he's like, what? And he's like, you're not a ghost, and now there's a dragon! The dragon, they're all there! They're like, hey, we're bad Farquad, you're bad! And the dragon just Ooh, fireball! Fireball! <laughs> Do you remember the fireball? I fireball, yeah. And then it's, all the, all the, all the heads went, they went flying everywhere. And now, oh, look, they made it to far, far away land, Jeff. Oh, it's so exciting. Yay. Oh, the Yay. dragon sneezed on us. Super gross. Okay, well, <laughs> that was donkey's going to go make yucky. waffles, Jeff. <laughs> is, that what, is that what he's known for? Yeah, he makes waffles. In the morning, I'm making waffles. That's what he says. Uh, there you and go. Then, Oh look, they're at the very end, and then oh, but no, it turns out everyone, all the all the other creatures, they're there too. There's the three blind mice and gingerbread man and leprechauns and and is uh, Puss in Boots is Antonio Banderas there? I know no, him. Not, this is before Antonio Banderas. Oh, but like oh. he, sh- he like they shot out the the champagne and they hit Tinkerbell and she's in the she's in the <laughs> clock out inside the theater. Jeff, you see her? She's having a rough go of it, man. Oh, yeah, poor there poor Tinkerbell. Is. Oh well, and that that's gonna do it. The lights have come up, Jeff. Now you and I. Let's exit through the gift shop and buy some Shrek merchandise. And remember to re- re- return your Ogre Vision 3D glasses, Jeff. I got to be honest. That didn't feel like torture at all. I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> so that is Shrek 4D. Uh, yeah. So the actual, I mean, it was a really fun show. You can still go check it out if you're in Japan or Singapore. And uh, actually, uh, something kind of kind of cool. This might be the first time ever you can watch a theme park attraction on Netflix. So if you want, you can actually watch the whole show on Netflix. Um, October 2011, the film was released on Netflix under the title The Ghost of Lord Farquaad as part of the DreamWorks Spooky Stories. And yeah, but then you have, you have to have somebody next to you to sneeze on you at all the right moments. <laughs> Not a good time. Not a good time to sneeze on people right now. No, uh, please don't. But you actually can watch it. As a matter of fact, I, I was when I was doing research for this episode, I found it on Netflix. It's still there. Just search for DreamWorks Spooky Stories, and it's one of the uh, one of the episodes there. There's like a three episode series, and it's one of those. So you can go that's and watch awesome. it on Netflix. So that's kind of cool. It's also been yeah. released multiple times, um, like on DVD and whatnot. Apparently, it was in like the DVD of Shrek, uh, like a re release, like a uh, like a special edition or something along those lines. But you can check it out. Um, there are uh, so the uh, so one neat thing is because. The, the Shrek 4D was so successful um, they actually like the, there was only one theater at the time and it's a 12 minute show so they could only load you know a max of one theater every 12 minutes um, so they actually built a second theater next to the first theater just to double capacity and the cool thing is during Halloween Horror Nights sometimes we'll actually clear out the seats for that theater put down wood and actually use it as a location for a Halloween Horror Nights uh, haunt maze or like a haunted uh-huh. maze so uh, this year, Jeff, when you and I went to Halloween Horror Nights, or this, this past year, when we went to Halloween Horror Nights, uh, it was the uh, uh, the Case Files Unearthed. Um, do you remember that <gasps> oh, one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Uh, the private detective or like a uh, investigator guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Kitty Cat Club and all that stuff. Yeah, but that, yeah. yeah. That, that, that whole haunted house took place inside of the second Shrek theater. So that's kind of cool. That's, that's wow. neat that they can I- repurpose that theater. I had no idea. That's very cool. Yeah. 
Uh, also at the uh, the the Hollywood and Orlando locations, they have a a, a donkey, a talking donkey. Uh, in the in the pre-show for the one in Hollywood, they actually had the donkey would actually talk to you know uh, guests inside the audience before the show started. And in the one in Orlando, they actually have a like a a, a photo area with donkey and then sometimes Fiona and Shrek come out as well. Um, but it's a really cool thing where they actually have like microphones and cameras so that donkey can actually respond to people and answer questions and whatnot and like talk to people uh and uh it's neat when he comes out and he like talk, and he has a lot of fun with it and he's the, the the actor there is just absolutely incredible i believe uh scott porter talked about like those kind of guys like the ones who just have to be quick on their feet and like yeah. play in character yeah, as yeah. those guys and uh and i remember we went there uh katie and i went there uh it's universal and she's a huge shrek fan and so she wanted to go meet donkey but his door was closed so we're like, okay, well, let's get a photo of it. And so she like snuck under the rope and like acted like she was knocking on the door. And so she knocked on the door and it was like taking a photo. And as she was taking the photo, Donkey was like, hey, what are you doing out there? <laughs> like, scared the crap out of her. Because I guess there's uh there are like uh, security measures that if if the doors get, you know, jostled. Tampered with, like, yeah. The, yeah, they're they're alerted to it. And I guess he was about to come out. So he, he scared the crap out of her. It was so funny. And then, so does uh, does yeah. that go away when the now that the ride is going away? Probably not. Uh, that is a like so that that meet and greet area is kind of a really small section, and it's like a very very popular area. I mean, it's it's super easy for them to do. It's just a kind of little corner. It's actually part of the Monsters Cafe. Like they actually use mm. a little chunk of the Monsters Cafe. Um, it used to be next to the exit of Shrek until they added the second theater, and then when they added the second theater, they had to they couldn't use that area anymore. So. Um, or maybe it was Transformers. I forget, I forget what exactly where it was, but yeah, they, they definitely had to move it at some point. Um, mm. One other cool thing, if uh, it's, it's a little late now, but in the, the gift shop for Shrek 40 in Orlando, they actually, uh, that was part of where the, the Alfred Hitchcock stuff was. And there was a staircase that was the Vertigo staircase and they repurposed it and it like led to a honeymoon suite. But that was the exact same staircase. They just kind of redressed it uh, to make it look more Shrek-like. But if you were ever huh. there, you could check that out, which is kind of cool. And the neat little yeah. neat little redressing. I don't know what they're going to be doing with the, uh, the location now. In Hollywood, they replaced it with a DreamWorks animation thing. Um, it's, so it's got like it's it's, an, it's another it's another three D animated film, but it's got it's more focused on Kung Fu Panda than anything else. Shrek's in it, but not as he's not as featured as obviously his own show. Um, now is that a is that a three D show or a four D show? I don't know. Actually, I haven't been on it. I mean, it's at least 3D. I don't know if they do the 4D special effects stuff. Mm. Wouldn't shock me if they did, though, because I'm sure they have all the sort of mechanics to make that kind of stuff like water droplets and like bubbles seems, and things along those lines. Seems like it would be a, a step backwards if they didn't use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, they need to be working towards 5D, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> what would 5D comprise of? I can't give you all the answers, Jack. You're going to have to <laughs> do some research and come up with some of this on your own. That's my favorite improv, where it's like you say, like, yes, and you're like, no, yes, no, no, you figure it out. Uh, at Universal Studios Singapore, Shrek 40 exists within a larger, far, far away themed area. I'm reading this from Wikipedia. Other attractions in the area include Donkey Live, an interactive live show using digital puppetry technology, which features hmm. Donkey entertaining and engaging guests in conversation in an intimate theater setting. So I imagine, you know, that's, I, I imagine that's a lot more like uh, the, the Crush attraction, like uh, Turtle Talk with Crush at Epcot. Like it was, it's literally just an animated thing. What were you going to say? Jim? Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, you know, digital puppetry is how uh, this whole career started for us. That's true. That's true. It's yeah, if you think mach about it. machinima on a different level. Uh, yeah. What else is there? Enchanted Airways, which is a junior roller coaster that features trains modeled after Dragon, which is Donkey's uh, lady friend. Puss in Boots' Giant Journey, which is a roller coaster with suspended ride vehicles featuring Puss in Boots as he runs from a giant goose. And oh. Magic Potion Spin, a miniature Ferris wheel for children, which is themed to be a part of a potion assembly line. So that's kind of cool. They actually have a full blown land. I would love to go check. It. I I've never been to the Universal Parks outside of the state, so I would love. And to which go to which one is that in? That's Singapore. In Singapore. Have you been to so, Singapore? I have not. I've been okay. to I've been to uh, Taiwan, and that's the that's only, where you went. Taiwan, yeah, yeah. That was a beautiful, beautiful place. There's a, there's a theme park in Taiwan as well, which I'd love to go to. It's like in the mountains. It's wild. Um, Let's see here. Uh, at one point uh, during the, the the run of Shrek 40, it was actually open in six different parks across the planet 
at one time, which is really impressive. I don't know that. I I bet I can name them. Go for it. Orlando, Hollywood, uh, Taiwan. No, nope. no, Singapore. Sorry, Singapore. Uh, uh, Germany. I'll give and you that's that. it. Those are the those are the only four. <laughs> yes, that's 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 the only four that of the six there were. No, it was uh, it was in uh, Orlando, Hollywood, Japan, Singapore, Warner Brothers Movie World in Australia, and Movie Park Germany. Oh, okay. So, I forgot about Australia yeah. and Japan. Yeah, Australia doesn't have a lot of theme parks. Uh, they have Luna Park in uh, mm-hmm. in Melbourne and in uh, in Sydney, and then Movie uh, Warner Brothers Movie World is kind of near the Gold Coast. And I remember driving past that. I was out there for an event one time, and uh, we I was like saw the big Warner Brothers logo. And I'm like, oh, is that a theme park? And yeah, so we'll have to go back. We, there's so many places we got to go, Jeff. So many places we got to go. I can't wait. I'm any excuse <laughs> to get back to Australia. We we used to go as a company so much, you know, yeah. in the old days. I'd love to start visiting it again. So if you want any more information on uh, on Shrek 4D, Yesterworld actually did a really great video on it over on YouTube. So once you're done subscribing to Annual Pass, youtube.com slash annual pass, go check out Yesterworld's video on it. It's really, really neat. Highly recommend that. So uh, And tell them Annual Pass sent you. Please, please leave a comment. <laughs> Let them know. Spread some love. Uh, yeah, and, and also don't forget you can watch it on Netflix, too. If you're in the U.S., you can watch it on Netflix. So you can watch the actual the ride video on it. It's not in 3D. Um, apparently there was a 3D version like that came with uh, a DVD, like the Shrek, uh, you know, re-release or whatever that came with 3D glasses. But the one on Netflix is not in 3D. It's it's set to uh, 2D, which makes it a little mm. bit easier on the brain. Yeah. So, but that's that's about it, Jeff. Do you have any any other fun facts you can think about for Shrek 4D when you were there? Uh, gosh, I I feel like you did a really good job of covering everything I was gonna. So it's like it's almost like you got a advanced copy of my notes or something. I'm not. I did. I went through, I went through yeah. and grabbed them all. So uh, there you go. Thank you very much, everyone, for the Shrek 40 love. Jeff, let's get to some Q and A from our let's beautiful community over on Rooster Teeth. Don't forget, if you have any questions or if you want to ask us a question, feel free to over on roosterteeth.com. That's where I go through all the comments. I love reading the comments. We do, you know, our Q&A. Uh, we do. A, I ask you guys a question every week. And uh, and yeah, you guys come up with some really good stuff. And I really, really do appreciate it. So uh, this one, the q and I pulled from is from the Haunted Mansion holiday episode we did. Um, okay. It was a few weeks ago. So these are questions around that. So if, any, if anything feels dated or themed around that, that's where it's from. The devil dog says these thumbnails, whoever makes them needs a raise and a kiss on the forehead. <laughs> Cartoon <laughs> Jeff and Jack are just so adorable. Maybe even tattoo worthy adorable. So the devil dog, that is Gail Fox. She is awesome. You can follow her over on Twitter. I think it's O Gail Fox, G A E L. And uh, she makes the most amazing artwork for us. She did the, she did the poster you can pick up in the store. And uh, we've been very, very fortunate to uh, have her sort of help us, uh, you know, create the, the aesthetic for uh, annual pass. And so we're very excited to get more stuff uh, coming in the future. We've got a new, we got a new shirts coming pretty soon. Uh, don't forget you can grab our pins too. We have our holiday pin. There's still some of those in stock and I love those pins. So grab one of those. And uh, yeah, we, we actually have a pin starter kit coming pretty soon as well. Keep- can I just say a special shout out to my devil dog friend? I also was a devil dog, Jack. I don't know if you know that about me. Uh, in no, basic I did not training, know. my company was the Delta 213 Devil Dogs. So for eight Ooh. miserable weeks, I was also a devil dog. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. I'm, le- I'm learning all kinds of stuff about you, Jeff. Oh, uh, yeah. Roman Heretic, which I believe is responding to us in the past, says, will you do an episode reviewing restaurants at parks? It would be pretty cool to learn about the hidden secrets of those themed restaurants like the Leaky Cauldron and Universal or Docking Base 7 Food and Cargo at Disney. Also has the possibility of being a crossover with Face Jam. I don't know if we I don't know if legally we can cross over with Face Jam based on our non-explicit tags on on our (laughs) podcast. But uh, no, no, I'd love to. Yeah, uh, Jeff and I actually, we ate at, uh, we, we talked about this on one of the last episodes recorded, but we ate at Lombard's, uh, the seafood place at Universal Orlando, and I'd never eaten there before. And it was really, really good. And um, I definitely I felt like, underdressed. Yeah. And I definitely would like to uh, to take advantage of this podcast and start going to some of those nicer restaurants around the parks. And so, uh, yeah, I would love to do uh, maybe maybe we do like an episode on like all of the restaurants or a few restaurants. So I don't know if we could do one, I don't know. If we do a full episode on just like one restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it might be something where we do like, let's go eat a couple things and then we'll talk about it on an episode. I think um, it's a great idea. 
Yeah, but yes, that, that sounds really cool. And, and, and Roman Heretic, I would love to do that. So again, if you have any questions like that, feel free to like ask them in the comments below and we'll answer them on a future episode. But now, Jeff, this is the time for answers of the week. This is where I ask a question to the audience. The question that I asked during the Haunted Mansion holiday episode was, what is your favorite hidden Mickey? Because, you know, hidden Mickeys are all over the place. There's some really great ones in like Haunted Mansion holiday. Um Really, the Haunted Mansion, they have like plates on the table in the, the big dining room area. And there's like plates are shaped like a hidden Mickey down there. Uh, so anyway, I asked, you know, what's your favorite hidden Mickey? Sassy Wombat says, my favorite hidden Mickey is the tattoo I got in a birthmark on my side. It's a bit specific. My second favorite is the paint circle hidden Mickey on Spaceship Earth when entering the Renaissance scene. That's one of my favorites, too. So there's like hmm. it's the Renaissance scene where it's like all the different, you know, the painters and whatnot. And there's a guy like passed out. And there's, uh, you know, like if you put down like a coffee cup, it leaves like a coffee ring stain. They yeah. did like three of those to make a little hidden Mickey out of paint. It's really cool. Oh, that's cool. That's a good one. Fluffy Toaster 13 says my favorite hidden Mickey is in Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin. Throughout the queue, there is a planet that closely resembles Earth, with the exception of one of the continents being Mickey. A close second would have to be in the gangster section of the great movie ride. Mickey's foot and leg sticks out underneath the giant public enemy movie poster. While I'm not sure if it's an official hidden Mickey, it counts in my book. That was an official hidden Mickey. So as you entered the gangster scene of a great movie ride, which I again, love that ride. There were a bunch of like movie posters and like, you know, all sorts of different posters up on the wall, but like it made it look like a poster had been pl like plastered over a Mickey mouse poster. So you could just see his foot and the big yellow shoe and like his tail poking out as well at the bottom mm. of it. So it was a really, really cool hidden Mickey. Uh, I love that one. Now, also the, the one inside of the great movie ride, there was a, a hieroglyph hidden Mickey as well in the Anubis scene, uh, or actually Indiana Jones scene. So, Really, really cool ones in there. Hold My Churro says, My favorite hidden Mickey is in the queue for Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid, which we talked about a couple weeks ago. This hidden Mickey can only be seen on November 18th, Mickey's birthday, at noon exactly. Parts of the overhang of the queue are carved away to let the sun shine through, and at that exact date and time for only a couple of minutes, the light from the sun creates the hidden Mickey. What? De huh? That that's is, like that's how Indiana Jones. D d what? <laughs> yeah, that's that is absolutely wild. If that is a legit real hidden Mickey, I, I completely missed that on the episode of uh, for, of uh, Journey of the Little Mermaid. But that's awesome. I, I, I I'm sad that we missed it. November 18th was just a couple months ago. So, Jeff, November 18th of, of this year, assuming that's not extra life, we, we got to be at, at at Magic Kingdom. And, and see yeah, this it's, it's how we're going to find the. It's how we're going to find the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, hang on. Uh, November 18th. I'm, I'm going to look this up real quick. Uh, yeah. Little Mermaid. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there's a, it's like. There, so there's a little cutout Mickey. Oh, wow. OK. Uh, is that. Tr why, OK, that is wild. There's so there's like a little it's like a, a cutout of Mickey where it lights up just perfectly. Why? I don't know if that's intentional or it's got to be. I guess so, man. That's how do you plan that? How do you like if you were if you're building this thing? How the heck do you plan that? You the imagination, imagineers. <laughs> I mean, like uh, at, like November eighteenth, they had to literally be there. Like, okay, let's do this to get the, to catch the light. That is that is absolutely wild. They were probably like, okay, it's on his anniversary. Where do we need to put this hole to make it look like? Uh, boom, boom, and then they did. Zzz, 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 done. <laughs> I guess so. Oh man. Okay, we'll have to check that out. November eighteenth, around noon. Exactly. I'll be there. Unless unless it's raining or cloudy that day. That's true. That would be unfortunate. Nick Jin H says my favorite story as a kid was Peter Pan. So my favorite hidden Mickey is in Big Ben on Peter Pan's flight. You see Mickey's silhouette in one of the windows on Big Ben. That's kind of neat. Uh, I didn't know that one. Yeah. And our winner that I'd randomly selected from uh, from the the list of all these beautiful people who are answering the question, who I'm going to send a theme park map to, is lovely Carly with three Y's. My favorite hidden Mickey is on Indiana Jones in Disneyland, California. When you first enter the room with all the skeletons, turn and look over your left shoulder and you'll see a skeleton against the wall wearing Mickey ears that says bones on it. Love seeing bones every time I go on that ride. That's uh -huh. really cool. I love that. I love stuff like that. I love little hidden fun things like that. So there you go. Very, very cool. Congratulations to lovely Carly. I'll reach out to you pretty soon and get that sent over your way. And now this week, the question I'm asking of you to answer down in the comments below 
is actually from a community member, from one of the pass holders. Uh, it was a great question that King of the Mooners sent in. And I was like, I gotta, I can't just like just have Jeff and I answer this. We'll have everyone answer it. The question is, what is your favorite souvenir that you got at an amusement park? Which, uh, Jeff, how many uh, have you have you brought home any souvenirs from amusement parks? Uh, well, I brought home. Well, I don't want to spoil it because we made a video out of it. Oh, okay. So, All my souvenirs. All right. Well, hey, that's a, that's a good tease. So over on YouTube, over on YouTube.com slash annual pass, we're going to be putting up a video pretty soon where Jeff and I did a $20 challenge. We both had 20 bucks to go into a, uh, a gift shop, actually Universal Islands of Adventure, and find the best souvenir you could find that costs less than $20. And uh, yeah, it turned out pretty good. I, I'm pretty excited for uh, people to start seeing this stuff. I think we're gonna we're gonna be trying to do more things like this, and uh, and yeah. So hopefully you'll enjoy. It. Hopefully it'll be, it'll be up pretty soon. Um, mine, you know, yeah. I want to hear yours. I was about to. I'm sorry. I was just about to say uh, I, you didn't tell me your favorite Mickey. So I was about to ask you. <laughs> so uh, my my favorite uh, my favorite hidden Mickey or my favorite souvenir. Your favorite your favorite hidden Mickey and your favorite souvenir. Uh, my favorite hit Mickey would probably have to be the, uh, the one, the one at great movie ride that was, right. uh, that was actually not the, not the hieroglyphic one, not the one behind the poster, but there was one at the gangster area. Uh, so just after you see the one behind the poster, if you, when you round the corner where Muggsy takes over the ride, there was a window way up high on like the gangster building that they come out of. And there was like a, a like a, a silhouette of a, of a Mickey of his face up in the window, uh, mm -hmm. like a, like a little paper cut out where light hit it, made it look like a little hidden Mickey that was actually put there by some of the cast members working the ride. It wasn't an official one, like the engine, the Imagineers oh. didn't put it there. Uh, some cast members put it there, and the Imagineers said, "Okay, that that works," and they left it there. So it was like it was one Subversive. made by. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. I mean, obviously it's gone now, but yeah, that was that was my favorite one. Uh, my favorite souvenir, though. Um, is what Katie and I went to the uh, behind the seeds tour at living with the land uh, at, at Epcot. And when it was over, we just had a, a blast going through. It was a lot of fun because it's kind of cool. They show you how they like do a bunch of neat stuff with like growing crops and whatnot. And at the very end of it, they had this, uh, there's like a little, like a booth where you, that's where you check in as well, but they had a booth there and they actually had uh, clippings from some of the plants inside living with the land that you mm. could take home and grow. And so Katie got a passion fruit vine, a uh, little, little, it was maybe like two or three inches tall. And she took it, brought it home, ended up growing out like four or five feet. So it got, got really, really big. And then the snowstorm actually hit last year in Texas and killed it, unfortunately. Oh, dude, that but sucks. it was still pretty cool. And so uh, they're, they're currently not doing the behind the seeds tour. And I haven't seen those sort of cut out the little clippings anymore. But hopefully they'll bring them back soon because they had a bunch of different plants you could you could pick from. But it was kind of cool to be like, this started its life at Epcot and now it's in our backyard. So uh, I but. I would like to I would like to have a favorite souvenir being a black kyber crystal. Apparently they're very rare. I was reading about they it the are. other day. Yeah. yeah like yeah, one yeah. in a hundred or something. There was a way you could kind of like shine a light through them, but now uh, they, they've they kept them behind the counter. Good. So for for those of you who are asking or are, are curious, the kyber crystal is the, the little crystal that goes inside of a lightsaber um, and it changes the color of the actual like lightsaber blade. Uh, there's red ones and there's like, you know, green, uh, blue, yellow. There's a few different colors, Probably purple, but the I black think. one, but you could, you always just buy those based on the colors, but the, the black one was just like a random one dropped into the red ones. So the red ones, you couldn't tell if it was black or red until like it, you put it into the thing. Most of the time it's red, but there were black ones in there and, uh, they're super, super rare and very valuable. So I actually, I wonder how much, yeah. let's check eBay for a black cyber crystal. While you're looking that up, since you didn't ask, I'm going to tell you my favorite hidden Mickey. What's that, Jeffrey? It's not at Disney World or Land. It's actually a, a hidden Mickey in the Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Do you familiar with the hidden Mickey in the Empire Strikes Back? I don't think so. There was a bunch of stuff hidden in the debris field uh, when they were uh, escaping the space worm. I don't know. I don't think that there's one in there, but there is definitely one in the scene right where Darth Vader like for like throws Luke through the window. Uh huh. There is a uh a projected. Well, I'll show you. I'll tell you what. I'll send you a picture. I'll okay. S put this and I'm I'm looking on eBay. It looks like you can get one. Uh, there's an authentic black kyber crystal for two hundred fifty dollars. 
Uh, oh, here's wow. another one for $34. <laughs> here's one for $60. So you can apparently buy them. Okay. All right. The, the Mickey Mouse cameo in Empire Strikes Back. You never knew about. Just scroll okay. down and you can see the images. Okay. Like a little like, hol- oh, yeah, hologram. On, on, the, on that left side there, little Mickey Mouse. Yeah. That's kind of cool. I didn't know about that. Yeah, you he was know there the whole the, time. Do you know about the hidden Mickey in Tron? No. In the original Tron or the remake? No, the original one. Yeah, no, I wasn't aware that I wasn't aware of that one. I think you've mentioned it before, but I thought you were talking about the sequel. Uh, no, so during the uh, the scene where they're on the um, the solar sail, there is actually a a giant hidden Mickey in the <gasps> background. Oh, yeah, I just googled it. Wow. Yeah, it's really really cool. It's very obvious. Like once you see it, you're like, oh, that's awesome. So yeah. very very cool. Yeah, Google Tron hidden Mickey, and you'll see yeah. it. it's really really cool. I love that. That's super cool. Yeah, Thanks. That, that is pretty neat. So, well, that's going to pretty much do it for this episode of Annual Pass, Jeff. I'm, I'm sorry that we weren't in person and I couldn't see your, your beautiful face. Well, but, we'll um, make, a, make it up soon. Absolutely. So do you feel like you learned anything today, Jeff, other than the Tron Hidden Mickey? Yeah, I did. I learned a lot uh, about a ride that I had, uh, that I had uh, gone on with you <laughs> that you remembered much better than I did. So thank you for refreshing my memory. It makes me happy and that we're actually we're we're on one. Uh, we 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 did that we rode this together, and so you get to experience it again. So that makes me happy. I no, I, I absolutely. I also got to learn about the six iterations of it throughout the world, mm. all of which I very adeptly, uh, deftly or adeptly named earlier. Uh, I just combined uh, those two words into adeptly, which is mm-hmm. it's uh, good. Not not a real I'm word. Big fan of adept punk. It's good music. <laughs> Uh, you know, the, uh, we, we've talked about it ad nauseum, so I don't need to repeat the six. We all know I know it, but, Obviously. uh, yeah. So, so, so I learned that that was cool. Cool. Sweet. Sweet. Well, I'm excited to uh, do future episodes with you on attractions that you actually been on. So that makes me happy, uh, to talk about as well. Did we rode, did we ride the mummy when we were in, uh, yeah, we rode the mummy. Yeah. So that's actually currently in a, a refurb right now. Uh, we'll talk about that one eh, relatively soon, but uh, I'm nervous because the rumor is they're getting rid of the Brendan Fraser cameo at the end. So we'll Why? see if that actually is the case because they're sort of retheming the entry queue because the initial like all the video they shot, like all the sort of like the plot of it is all like in four three from, you know, 20 something yeah, years ago. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so if they get rid of that, they have to get rid of the, the Brendan Fraser cameo at the end, which will make me sad. So hopefully they're not going to. But we'll talk about that one in the future. So. That's going to do it for this week. Thank you very much, everyone out there. Make sure to please spread the word about Annual Pass. Let your friends know about this podcast. These these podcasts live and die based on word of mouth. And uh, I'm very, very passionate about this stuff. I could talk about this stuff for years, and I would love to. And uh, all we need need is uh, some beautiful, beautiful ears listening along with us because uh, I want to be open at least until we get to Epic Universe, which is going to open probably in three years from now. So we've got to get 150 episodes or so to go. Um, yeah. And so please uh, support the show, pick it up some merchandise. We have some new shirts coming out pretty soon. I don't know. They may actually already be out. Uh, we've got pins coming soon and we already have a pin in the store. Uh, yeah, lots of really cool stuff coming out very soon. And it means a lot to me that you guys are supporting the show. So thank you very, very much for that. More than anything, just if you could just enjoy it, that would be, that would be the best for us. Just, just hopefully enjoy the show because we enjoy making it for you. And, you know, leave a comment that always that always makes me feel really happy. I love reading the comments on the episodes. So, uh, you yeah, know, if, if you're enjoying it, just let us know. Let us know what we're doing right. Let us know what we're doing wrong. And uh, we'll, we'll keep working on it and making the best show we possibly can. So that's going to do it this week. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I'm going to go relax, take a break. Uh, it's it's almost New Year's Eve here. It's almost my birthday actually coming up pretty soon. Very and, excited. Uh, yeah. You didn't what? I'm very excited for you. Oh, thank your you. Your birthday. I'm, I'm very excited. It's, you got a lot going on. You got your birthday. You got your Disney marathon. That's like it's a it's a jam packed uh, New Year's. It's a jam packed time of the year for you. The next two weeks is going to be pretty wild for me, but it should be a lot of fun. So I'm sure we'll talk about that in the future. But until then, let's get out of here. Y'all take care of yourself. Stay safe. Be careful out there, and uh, we will see you very soon. Love you. Bye. Bye.